one of the most important, but oftentimes one of the hardest to understand concepts that we use in aerodynamics is called the Reynolds number. So let's consider a motivating example. Let's say that you want to design an airplane and you're able to build a prototype of it. And you want that airplane to fly at some height and some speed and do all these fancy things, but the full size of your airplane is too big for a wind tunnel that you have access to. It's, can you imagine trying to find a wind tunnel big enough for some of the modern airplanes that we have out there? That would be really hard. So we want some kind of way to be able to scale our airplane down, but still be able to accurately test it, even though it's scaled down. We want the velocity to behave the same, we want the airflow properties to be the same, and those are hard to match if you start to change the size of the airplane. So, enters the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is defined as the density of the fluid multiplied by the velocity of the fluid times some length. And this is kind of arbitrary, but usually we choose the distance between the leading edge, the front edge of a wing, and the back edge. And we call that the chord. So usually we use the chord right here, and we divide by the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. The reason why the Reynolds number is so useful is because if you take all of the units, you know, velocity is meters per second, length is meters, and you do all that for all the terms, all of the units cancel out. So the Reynolds number is a unitless number which opens up a whole new world of, you can have a small airplane, a model airplane even, and a big airplane, and if you put them at the same Reynolds number, then you will get the same behavior out of both of them. And how do you put two things at the same Reynolds number? So let's say that you have one airplane that's really big. If you have a really big airplane, and you have an identical copy of it that is scaled down, then you can say, okay, the length for this one has become smaller. And so we either need to increase the velocity of the air, increase the density, or decrease the viscosity somehow. And you can do all of those things in wind tunnels. And so you can take a small scaled down version of the airplane and you can change the properties of the air inside the wind tunnel to get the same Reynolds number as if it was the full real thing flying in the real world. And if you get the same Reynolds number, the properties of the airflow will be the same in both cases. And it's almost like magic. It's a fantastic way that we can model different airplanes. And not only can you do it like that, sometimes you'll actually want to instead put the model, instead of in air, you can put it in water. We have a water tunnel here at BYU. And as long as you get the Reynolds number the same, that water will actually exactly mimic the airflow that would occur around this. Even though it's a totally different fluid with different density and viscosity, different velocities and lengths are involved, but if the Reynolds number is the same for both cases, the airflow will behave the same.